50 years after the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, France was also among the nations drafting and adopting in 1998 the UN Declaration on Human Rights Defenders, which is a key text to recognize the work done by all of you today. Recognition is in fact what you need and what is at stake with our gathering. That's why I'm so happy to see many of you here today sharing this ideal, whatever your background is, civil society, representative of the public institutions, member of the press, diplomats. And I would add I'm so happy to see you dancing and singing and giving a great atmosphere to this meeting. Indeed, through the awards, we will honor some emblematic people or organizations who were bold enough, committed enough, to take the risk to stand up and fight for those whose rights were a threat. But whatever the outcome, this ceremony will not have any loser. It will only have winners. Winners of the awards, of course, whom I congratulate in advance, but also all those human rights defenders, in particular the nominees, which I encourage to continue their work, and more broadly, all those who, by coming here, are joining their forces with them. With all of you, Kenya wins more social justice, more recognition given to the minorities, more transparency in decision-making processes, and a fairer society. To all of you, I would like to say thank you, merci. Thank you because human rights are a continuous challenge for all of us. The achievements and rights obtained one day can be scrapped or violated the following day. Defending human rights is an endless marathon we all invited to run. And in this race, like Eliud Kipchoge or Bridget Posgay, we all need pacemakers, fast runners like you, defenders to show the way forward. Thankfully, there is a coalition gathering you, defenders, pushing you to give your best, mobilizing Kenyan authorities and foreign partners to take part in the effort. When we think of human rights, a positive sign from Kenya was the organization this very month of the Nairobi International Conference for Populations Development 25. We were pleased to receive a French delegation led by the Ambassador Delphine O. She invited everyone to what might be the biggest summit ever organized about women's rights, generation equality, which will take place in Mexico and Paris next year. In July, I said her invitation to you. Defense of women's rights is a key aspect of uh, French human rights policy at home and internationally because there cannot be any democracy where the rights of women are violated. And for this reason, we believe in feminist diplomacy. Feminist Thank you. Fe feminist diplomacy is not only about playing global, for example, to promote sexual and reproductive rights, but also acting on the ground to support social and economic rights of the women. Because when it comes to women, human rights are also the right to do business, to own land, and to benefit from a supportive legal framework. That's why what we try to achieve in Kenya through the Embassy's PISCA Fund, its latest version unveiled a few months ago, is called 511 Coalition for Women, along the fifth Sustainable Development Goal, which is, as you may all know, achieving gender equality and empower all women and girls. Indeed, there are many other issues besides women. Our country is also committed to support LGBT communities, 
in their fight to be respected and recognized. We have a special attention on fighting human trafficking and on children's rights. Freedom of speech and opinion needs also strong and committed people. Let's have a thought for the too many journalists who are detained or lose their lives in fighting for transparent information. And I want to have a special thought for those in Somalia. The list of combats for human rights is long and I don't pretend to be exhausted. But I wouldn't like to forget to mention that France, together with European countries, fights for the universal abolition of the death penalty. And we are happy to get more and more support from African countries. Finally, I would like to say that we believe in a strong multilateral system to guarantee a universal recognition of the rights. This is why France is candidate to be a member of the UN's Human Rights Council for 2021-2023. From local to global, the fight for human rights is ours. This is why we are here today. I would like to thank you for your commitment and enjoy the ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Lee Gustav, for welcoming us to your space and also uh, the support. A huge challenge to all of us that we are marathoners and we can't stop this marathon of human rights, of defending human rights. And on that note, I just want to remind that the reason why we are here is because we want to celebrate uh, exemplary work of human rights defenders. Uh, this initiative of honoring human rights defenders was started by uh, a working group on human rights defenders that brings together diplomatic missions and civil society organizations that are all concerned with the protection of human rights defenders. Um, the working group convinced every two months and our preoccupation is human rights defenders, their situation, and how we can continue uh, um, advocating for a conducive policy and other working environments. Um, this award started off in 2016 and we have every year consistently ensured that we have recognized. In this booklet, uh, I'm sure by now each one has have a copy, you'll find some of the great um, individuals that have also uh, been recipient of the award. But behind the scenes are people, uh, communities, individual human rights defenders that notice or identify the work that human rights defenders do and they have nominated them. They're the ones that say, I, I, I appreciate what this person does at our community level. Increasingly, we're receiving more, more and more and more and more um, applications, uh, nominations for individuals, and it becomes a very tough uh, job to identify who to be awarded. The group that has this responsibility is uh, an independent group of very respected individuals within our society, human rights defenders, uh, that represent both, both the grassroots national organizations uh, and other prominent persons within our society. At this point, allow me to invite the judging panel that was involved in the process of identifying and selecting the winners for today. Uh, this team, the judging panel, is led by, by no other than um, Dr. Willy Mutunga, our former Chief Justice. So welcome the team.
uh, Andrew Maina and uh, George Morara. That's, that's, that's uh, the, the judges there, one of the judges. Um, we don't want to talk about uh, those who have won the awards. Um, I think when the names come out, you, you basically be aware of what our concerns are, who are as uh, human rights activists. Uh, and my message, uh, my message as chair, because I was told to say something, is, uh, is this. Uh, there's this historian, uh, Eric Hobsbawm. I like reading uh, his work. And in one of the, his books he says, or he writes that, the world risks explosion and implosion. And it must change. And so the human rights work has reached this frontier now, which is not just local, as uh, Ambassador has clearly said, it's also global. And it's a fight, in my view, uh, for a peaceful, uh, non militaristic, equitable, ecologically safe and proper, uh, prosperous uh, planet. Uh, that's, that's what I think that global solidarities are about, uh, solidarities among human rights groups all over the world, is that we realize that if we don't do what we're supposed to do, the planet will explode and implode. Thank you very much. And now you have met the team that has to deal with a very, very tough assignment to give us the, uh, the awardees for tonight. Um, before then, every year what we do is that we recognize and want to hear very briefly in a good, in a, what the Human Rights Defend, uh, the, the award means to the recipients. Uh, I'm not sure if. Uh, uh, Christine Kadier is around to share her testimony. Christine, Christine Kadier won the last year's uh, award uh, as the upcoming Human Rights Defender of the Year. In her apps, notice she's not around. Having said that, um, moving on, um, we sometimes when we do human rights work as human rights defenders, one of the bigger questions we are always asked, do we preach to the already converted or do we preach to everyone? Is human rights work something that is done only for human rights, for among human rights defenders or does it also involve governments and do we engage? I want to confirm that we engage with government and at this time I'd like to invite Lady Justice um, Baru to confirm that very briefly. Karibu. Chief Justice, uh, invited guests, uh, Pastor from uh, Belgium, and all protocols observed. Thank you so much, uh, Kamal, for inviting me this afternoon. It is indeed my pleasure and single honor to be in your midst because uh, serving in government, uh, you must have a background from somewhere. I'm actually a child of the movement and human rights defenders before I became a judge, <laughs> I was uh, working on human rights. And even now, as I engage as a judge, I'm still the chairperson, African Men for Sexual Health and Rights, Amsha. So I have not lost my touch with human rights defenders. And uh, my, my challenge this afternoon, as we celebrate uh, the human rights defenders who will be honored today, is to ask ourselves, in whatever we do, do we do it to the utmost best? 
in uh, the race that Madam Ambassador talked about, whether you are a pace uh, setter or you are a pace maker or you are the unlimited, do you do it to your best? So that in uh, defending human rights, let us not leave anyone behind. And particularly for human rights defenders, I would urge you, there are those persons with disabilities, there are those persons who are differently oriented from ourselves, people who are gay, people who are lesbians, people who are bisexual, people who are intersex, people who are transgender, do we carry them along as we defend human rights? That is my challenge this afternoon. So even as I sit as a judge, I'm conscious that I have this rich history in human rights defending. And um, as uh, the former Chief Justice has said, what you do, do it to your best. Whatever mark you leave in whichever situation that you, you are at, do it at your best. It was not my day to give a speech uh, on behalf of the government. Really, I am not a representative of government, but uh, I do take responsibility that whenever government has uh, violated human rights, every person under our new constitution, you have a right to assert your right. That document, unless we utilize it to the maximum, it will remain at the politician's hands. Tomorrow it will be BPI, the, other, the next day it will be something else. But as long as we have that constitution, the fundamental human rights of a human being, whether you, have, you are a human right defender in whichever field, sex workers, drug users, uh, a lesbian, a gay person, take that constitution and use it to your advantage. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your family. Thank you so much for the challenge. Uh, no one should be left behind when we are focusing on defending human rights. So at this point, we're moving down straight to the core business of the house. I hope my colleagues, you are all ready because we are ready to announce, to make the necessary announcements today about individuals that we feel strongly are the most deserving for the, for the honor this year. Uh, I would like to have, not far from the podium, colleagues uh, Dewa and Sophie and others who will work with us at this point so that we can move on very smoothly. Dewa and Sophie and others, I hope you are ready. Because if you are not, I'll invite Javan the poet and he'll entertain us for a few, two more minutes. <laughs> This is like, Gavin, are you ready? <laughs> I could give you a chance because this don't seem Deborah is around and, and Sophie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the band. ready for something different? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Business? Yeah. Business? Yeah. I love that. Business? Yeah. Okay, so this particular, it's not a, it's not a poetic piece, rather it's a, it's a hip hop song. I wrote it to inspire the youth to not just look at crime and uh, drug and, you know, give up and all that stuff. So business, business basically says, Business is business. Any type of business is something that can sustain you and you can move on with it. So, business. Uh, as we wait for the band, I'm going to teach you some of the lines as we, talk, we start to sing together. So, it goes like this. Eh? Na uzo to bow, na uzo ni bai, na uzo to bow, na uzo ni bai, kabo, ofendis to do biz, you? Yeah, I love the energy. I want this first row. This first row. 
So I'm going to give them a mic. So, so first row. Wait, please. First row. Bizni bees. Now who's to bow? Now who's any buy? Now who's to bow? Now who's any buy? Kabo, you have to do bees, Jew. Bizni bees. Bizni bees. Have you ever seen somebody say bees? Bizni bees. I love it. Bees bees. main categories. Uh, the first one being upcoming human rights defender. The second one being the human rights defender of the year I want. The third being lifetime achievement or Munir Mazuri lifetime achievement award. And the fourth one is the people's choice award. So at this point I'd like to invite all the nominees of the upcoming HRD of the year category. And here I read them by name by name. I would like to invite them to the front as I read them. Upcoming Human Rights 
Defender of the Year, Benazil Mohamed, Garissa County. <laughs> Those who don't know Benazil, uh, is an FGM survivor and anti FGM crusader from Garissa County, a founder and director of Silver Lining Kenya. So, Karibu. The second person, the second nominee in this category is Joan Nandiri from Kakamega County. Joan Elizabeth Nandiri is a lawyer, is a social entrepreneur from Lugari sub county of Kakamega County, an alumina of Young Africa Leaders Initiative and a Global Peace Ambassador by Global Peace Chain. She co-founded a money community-based organization in 2016 and champions implementation of SDGs, especially on peace and justice. So that is Joanne Nandiri. The third nominee in this category is Ryan Muiruri from Kiabu County. Ryan Muiruri, formerly known as Ruth Muehaki Wangui, was born intersex, though recorded as a female at birth. However, once he hit adolescence, his testosterone what? <laughs> levels heightened, especially in the making him male. This brought about confusion and a lot of issues, especially in regard to Ryan's identity. During that trying time, he noted with great concern the existing gap in addressing the plight of intersex persons in Kenya. Lyon started his human rights work in 2015 to advance the lives of intersex persons from his individual capacity. He joined hands with other intersex human rights defenders in 2016 and co-founded the Intersex Persons Society of Kenya to amplify the voices of intersex persons. So now we know Ryan. In the same category is Mauricio Ochieng, Ochieng from Kisumu County. Ochieng, Ochieng. Are you here? Ochieng, Ochieng. Ochieng, Ochieng, as he is popularly known, is a, is a, is a transgender activist entrepreneur and a human rights defender from Kisumu. He works with the Nyanza, Liftivari, and, and Western Kenya, Nyarwek LGBT network. And his human rights work started in 2012, protecting and defending the song individuals in Western Kenya by responding to cases of violations documented. And he documented several cases and assisted in ensuring access to justice for the song individuals. And he is volunteered as a security focal point person in the Kisumu cluster. So they meet the chain of chain. In the same category, oh my God, this was a tough call. In the, this category, we also have Javan Omondi from Nairobi County. Javan Omondi is also known as Javan the Poet. He is a community leader, artist doing poetry, rap music, and entrepreneur at Dandora Slums. He's a computer engineer who loves music and traveling. He has organized over 70 community events, which include conversations on various matters that involve the community, political leaders, artists, and grassroots organizations to fight solutions to, on, to various things, most of them being issues that change the living standards of Dandora and other slums in Nairobi. That's German. <laughs> In the same category, the judges also identified this time not an individual, but but a group. That and this is the Intersex Persons Society of Kenya. Now, if you expect the whole society to move to the stage, you might be disappointed. It's an organization. And the Intersex Persons Society of Kenya is an initiative that started in Nairobi County on November, to, on, in November 2016 to provide support and creating awareness, as well as gathering data to establish 
the identifiable presence of intersex persons in Kenya, uh, the, the identifiable presence of, of parties, all beliefs uh, that the human rights, dignity or lives of all persons uh, are critical. ICP, IPSK works to develop tools and information suitable for advocacy to be used in awareness campaigns towards an open, tolerant, and enabling society of intersex persons. I think you won't forget that one of the biggest achievements is that during the last census that we had that category, the intersex person. So that is the Intersex Person Society of Kenya. What's our applause? So to announce the winner will be um, a member of the judging panel. So I invite the member of the judging panel to come and announce the winner. And at the same time, I will invite the ambassador of Sweden and the ambassador of Germany who will help us in recognizing these individuals. So let's have a full stage at this point. So I invite Phyllis to announce the winner. Thank you so much. Um, I'm glad that I didn't get to meet you before <laughs> the hard work that we had to do because I would never have made up my mind. But um, rest assured that we were really amazed by the work that you have put in, all of you. We were really humbled even to be at that position where we had to make a choice. Um, it was really tough. But uh, at the end of the day, we had to come up with, uh, with a choice. And therefore, it's my humble privilege to announce the winner of the upcoming HRD award. Uh, drum rolls. <laughs> ben Azir Mohammed. Um, but this, uh, congratulations, Ben Azir. Um, and this time, uh, we had a tie because we felt that uh, there was need to recognize um, and incorporate a larger group of people. And therefore, we also gave the award to the Intersense, Intersex Persons Society of Kenya. Congratulations. Congratulations, Benazi. Benazi Mohamed, congratulations. The second one. Just to add that, in addition to the plaque, the winner also gets a check to advance the human rights work that they have been doing. So, so you write the intersex person. Um, the intersex person, sir, who's, who's the representative? Congratulations, the Intersex Society of Kenya. Thank you. Congratulations to the winners, and each person actually is a winner, so uh, the, the member of the judging panel will issue each of the nominees with a certificate. As it was said before, everyone is a winner, uh, so it's my humble uh, pleasure to recognize Joanne Nandiri.
Ryan Moriri. Congrats, Ryan. Ocheng, Ocheng. Last but not least is Javan, the poet. Thank you very much. Um, wow, that was, I don't even know how you said it for it, but I'm sure everybody knows that this is a very deserving win and recognition and appreciate the, judge, the work of the, judging, the judges. So the next award is the Humanized Defender of the Year Award. Humanized Defender of the Year Award. This is Another very coveted award because it recognizes among all of us in Kenya the great work that the individual or the group do within the society and doing that work uh, under very tough conditions, sometimes conditions that can be life-threatening. Among the people that have been nominated for this particular uh, category are Wilfred Olal. <laughs> Wilfred Olal is the Wilfred Olal is the coordinator of the Dola Community Justice Center and is the convener of the Social Justice Center Working Group. He is a husband and a father of three kids. Yes, not just a human rights defender, a father and a husband. <laughs> not not a husband not a husband of three, but a father of three. <laughs> Apart from being a human rights defender, he is a former businessman in the surprise industry. Olal started his human rights work in 2005 by joining the Bungala Mwananchi Social Movement as a member and lost to the position of the national coordinator, where he advocated for the expansion of civil, civic space and campaigning for the right to protest against the corrupt individuals. So that is Olal. The other nominee in this category is Rose Olguba from Malsabit County. Rose Olguba is from Malsabit County, is a courageous and passionate woman who fights for the rights of women and girls in her community. She focuses on, the, on various thematic areas, but primarily the fem, uh, f, uh, fighting against female genital mutilation, child marriages, which is early child marriages, uh, women and property rights. Uh, she fights against beating of the girl child and, teenage and early teenage pregnancies. She's a mother of five, and she has also adopted two children. She's dedicated her time to advocate for upholding of human rights since she left her place of work in June 2017. That's Rose Olguba. I also dare say that uh, she left her job. The job was sacrificed because of her human rights work. So that's Rose. The third person who is in this category is Michael Kiyoko from Mombasa County. <laughs> Michael Kiyoko Maundu is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. He was admitted into the role in 2003. He practices in the coast region. In 2006, uh, Moved by cases of police brutality and arbitrary arrests, violence and discrimination against LGBT Q and sex persons and sex workers in the coast region, he started offering pro bono legal representation to these communities within the coast region. Such services include legal representation at police stations and court, legal counseling, preparation of legal documents, among others. He also undertakes legal and advocacy 
like offering interviews, writing protest letters, engaging authorities, training, and so on, in order to safeguard the human rights of the LGBT and sex workers community. So that's Michael Kiyoko. I'll need many, there are several. <laughs> in the same category, we have another nominee, Colin Skodek. Colin Skodek is from Kisumu County. Where is Colin Skodek? Colin Skodek is a human rights activist, a thinker, poet, and a proud father of one daughter. Her name is Lisa. He envisions local and global communities that uphold human rights, freedom, and inclusivity of its members, and where women and young people can live to the fullest realization of their potentials, rights, and privileges. Collins is a co-founder of Kondele Social Justice Center and convener of the Western Kenya Social Justice Centers. He draws his, his inspirations from the efforts of other human rights defenders like Okia Mtata and documentation of successful struggles of survivors, of, of survivors globally. Uh, that is... Colin Skodek. And then we also have Domtila Chesang from West Pokot County. <laughs> Domtila is a trained high school teacher, uh, was born and raised up in the slopes of West Pokot County. She founded One Rep Foundation. Oh, I, I Rep Foundation. I Am Responsible Foundation, a community-based organization which sensitizes and carries out community empowerment campaigns. The campaigns are geared towards empowering the community with knowledge and information on negative effects of harmful cultural practices like FGM and child marriages. She's an FGM survivor who took a stand against the vice despite being branded a coward. She's a full-time human rights defender. Chesang. Thank you. And please don't look for this individual because he embodies an organization. Uh, this is the Social Justice Center's working group. So in this category, great recognition of the work collectively that the Social Justice Working Group has done. The Social Justice Center's working group is a consortium of 28 justice centers, mainly based in Nairobi, Kisumu, and Mombasa's informal settlement. Collectively, the Justice Centers are a movement advocating for the realization of social justice within some of Kenya's most marginalized communities. The Social Justice Centers Working Group who advocates the fi and fights for the promotion of human rights in all spheres of their respective communities through documentation, monitoring, reporting of cases of human rights violation, and holding of community dialogues within their areas of advocacy. And may I, may I also add, they do it with great challenges and danger. And that is the Social Justice Working Group. That being the least, I would like at this point, therefore, to invite um, the ambassador, the French ambassador, and the Netherlands uh, ambassador to come over and to, oh, the Netherlands charge the affairs. I think that's French. I'm not sure what I'm saying. I'm reading. <laughs> Uh, to come and honor these individuals. So, my colleagues. Oh, and I forgot that we have, of course, the owner of these awards actually are members of the judging panel. So, I invite Lechum Wikari. Hi, everyone. Nanisikia uko nyuma? Yes, I'm here. Nduru. So my name is Rachel, and uh, what I'll say, we acknowledge each one of you, and um, we respect your courage, bravery, and uh, the kind of sacrifice most of us go through to do this work. Sometimes we feel we are not being remembered, or people don't see what we do. But as a jury member, also it was really difficult, especially with the emerging also social movements that are coming up. And also not keeping in mind we have also movements which are ending femicide, the women movement ending femicide in the country. We have the environmental rights movement. Uh, we have the vict mothers of victim movements in the country. And we also have the sex workers movement, uh, LGBTQ, uh, human rights in general. 
And um, for us, it was difficult, I must say. But um, all of you are winners. And we must acknowledge that. So as I go to announce the winner, the first winner category, it goes to none other but Wilfred Olal. It's not over, it's a shared tie, which means also when I said we recognize the emerging movements that are there, when people don't recognize that they exist because they are not registered or so. Um, and this is a collective work of that movement or that individual. So this award also goes to the members of Social Justice Center Working Group. I am not sure that we can give the, that last award to only one individual here. I think it's a, it's a movement. <laughs> so I think we need to see you, but very briefly here. And this one was very specific. I need to stress it. Because why we decided as a jury to tie it, we understand people also use their resources in the movement. So half of the resources will go to you, Olal. Half of it, half will go to build the work of the movement. So, we'll shortly be giving the, 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 the winners time to speak, but for now, we'll only um, let the Church of the Affairs to give the award to the winner. To tie it, I'm celebrating. <laughs> need to take a photo. Thank you very much. And at this, and now everyone gets a certificate because everyone is a winner. And for the certificate, this year we did it differently. It was about, um, in specific, with the kind of struggle each nominee is uh, doing. So this is not a certificate for nomination, but a certificate of recognition of your work. And um, also, to also to ensure like you're able to use it in different platform and to share with your comrades. Thank you. So the first one will go to Domitila. Simpigera Makos. The second one will go to Michael Kyoko. The third one will go to Rose. And also for Rose, it symbolizes a lot of also the feminist struggle in the community level. The other one goes to Collins. Thank you. Um, the third category, and remember, there will be a fourth category, and that the fourth category and the fourth winner will be determined by you. Don't forget that we are also going online to identify who will be the, the Public Choice Award winner. So at this point, we are going to recognize the, the award called the Lifetime Achievement Award. The Munil Mazului Lifetime Achievement Award uh, recognizes individuals that have done great and exceptional work in defending human rights work. Uh, among the nominees for this category this year are Onyango Olo from Sierra County. 
And I just must say that we, it's actually the late Onyango Olo. So may I invite Ruth uh, to come to the front on behalf of Onyango Olo. Thank you, Ruth. As Onyango Olo stood tall as a social justice and political activist among his peers of liberal democratic critics of the 1990s, he was well known in the community of activists and after stinking exile, Onyango Olo worked mainly as an online activist, blogging and writing on various themes on political reforms in Kenya. In this characterization, we got to know the works of Onyango Olo for almost eight years. Onyango Olo lived in, a, he lived in life as a thorough going ideologue in, in neither want for material satisfaction nor the pleasure of keeping friends that he disagreed with. For good or bad, he was very steadfast and principled. It's the late Onyango Olo, but is represented here by his sister, Luth. So, thank you. In this category of Munil Mazuri Lifetime Achievement Award, we also have Penina Mwangi from Nairobi County. <laughs> Penina Mwangi is a mother of one and a guardian of five children, the eldest being 18 years old. All of them are children of sex workers. She began her human rights work more than 20 years ago. After college in 1998, she started to work as a bar hostess where she learned that violence, including murder of women working in the bars or those doing sex work and based in the bars and brothels is not uncommon. Together with other bar hostesses and sex workers, they used to have sessions where they discuss horror stories of police who arrest and violate them asking for sexual favors or jail for the girls. They agreed to form an organization to advocate for the rights of the bar hostesses and sex workers. At the, time, at the same time, HIV and AIDS was at its peak in Kenya um, and was affecting sex, sex workers and bar hostesses the most, uh, the most. In some bars, they lost all the bar hostesses. There was a lot of stigma and panic in the bars. So, Penina Mwangi. In this category also is Mali Ole Kaunga from Laikipia County. Wow. Ole Kaunga is a husband and father of five, three daughters and two sons. Other than being a human rights defender, he keeps livestock. <laughs> he, he founded and eventually became the director of Os Osiligi in 1995. Osiligi later transformed into Impact Trust, an indigenous human rights organization active in, in northern Kenya. He is an advisory member of the Global Green Grant, which deals with environmental rights defenders worldwide. He has led networking initiatives and is one of the co-founders of the recently emerged network organization Paran that brings together several civil society organizations active in northern Kenya. His work has also been recognized internationally and led to his ongoing engagement with organizations such as the International Working Group on Indigenous Affairs or the Climate Justice Resilience Fund, among us other. And that is Mali Olekaunga. <laughs> the same category we have oh, from Nairobi County, Dennis Nzioka. <laughs> Dennis Zioka is a Kenyan-based LGBTIQ and sex workers' rights activist. He is also a book author, publisher, and trained journalist and talent. Currently, he volunteers his skills to build and support African LGBTI and sex worker-led movements in media and online platforms, and creating community resource portal for sexual and gender minorities. He's not just familiar with health and rights promotion for sexual and gender minorities, but one that leaves the work and already has established and trusting contacts in the movement. He was also the first to report on sex work organizing by the, the Denizioka News Agency, something that he earned, that earned him the Saudi Journalism Award for Honest Balanced Reporting, given by Keswa and inaugural, the, at the inaugural sex, Kenya Sex Workers Awards. Dennis has been a wonderful resource, peer mentor, and cross friend of many. Dennis, where are you? 
he'll be here soon. In the same category, we have Karen Omanga from Kisumu County. <laughs> Karen Wamboe Omanga is a 54-year-old married mother of six. She is currently a leader of Nyando Community Justice Center, where she has been working as a response officer. Other than being a HRD, she's a rice farmer in a watch rice scheme. She coordinates some group of women in empowerment programs like value addition on broken rice and economic empowerment where she trains women to be self-reliant. She's a founder member of Nyambende Support Program, CBO, which does rescue and referrals of GBV and stroke SGBV cases in Nyando, Nyakach, and Muhoroni sub-counties. So that's Karen Omanga. Thank you. <laughs> Last but not least in this category we have from Kisi County, Elijah Anyona Nyambia. <laughs> Elijah Anyona Nyambia is 61 years old, raised in Kisi County. Uh, he is an environmental enthusiast and a defender for the better part of his life. He, has, he, jo he also joined other human rights campaigners uh, in his county and worked with the National Environment Management Authorities as a volunteer for more than nine years. Um, he was at the front line in supporting the government's directive to ban the use of polythene paper. Through this, he was nominated by the Kisi governor to the Kisi County Environmental Committee to mainstream human rights within the committee's work. In June 2018, the county government awarded him a uh, beat plastic and pollution certificate in recognition of his work during the 2018 World Environmental Day. And that's Elijah Anyono. Thank you. So at this point, I'd like to invite um, the ambassador of Norway and the Belgium ambassador to come over and recognize the winners. But of course, let's also have a member of the judging panel to tell us more about the winners. Welcome. The, the judges were convinced quite clearly uh, from the nominations that uh, we got this year that the theme that came from those nominations was actually breathing life into Article 10 of the Constitution. Those of you who have looked at that article, it emphasizes equality, human dignity, inclusiveness, and the protection of uh, the marginalized. And uh, that theme is actually uh, reflected in the awards that, uh, uh, in, in the people who won the awards and the groups that won, won the awards. And it's very uh, satisfying to see that the new frontier for human rights is actually one of fighting for the protection and promotion of uh, the marginalized groups. Uh, I must just uh, announce that it was very tough. As you can see them all, they have worked hard. Uh, they have defended the rights of individuals, rights of their communities, and uh, it was very hard to know who will be the winner. Uh, the second thing is we don't die with the work we do. The work remains with us and it must continue. Maybe I challenge all of you. Death is there for us and the work must continue. What legacy will you leave when you die? Because we are not here to live. We are here to move and others to come. Have you mentored anyone who can continue with the work you are doing? Or have you put something in place when you leave? Your name will always be remembered. Having said that, uh, I'm going to announce the first winner is Dennis Nzioka.
Let's appreciate. Let's appreciate that. Uh, the second winner is Penina Mwangi. Okay, the third winner, as others also announced, is the Onyango Olo Foundation. Okay, the award will go to the foundation and continue the work which was initiated for, by Onyango Olo. So we appreciate the work Ruth is doing and we believe that Ruth will always wear the, the feet and the shoes. <laughs> We still continue with the certificates. Uh, this certificate belongs to Mali Ole Kaunga. Congratulations for the work you have been doing to the community. I know where you do the work is very tough, and we recognize your efforts. Uh, the next is for Karen Wamboi Omanga. We recognize the work you are doing. Okay, the next is Elijah Anyona. DK, you can also continue from there now. <laughs> so, <laughs> congratulations, congratulations, congratulations to all of you. I think you'll agree with me that we are daring and we have to do the real work. And these are the people who are doing the real work. So, congratulations to all of you for being the winners and what wonderful work that has been done by the judging panel. Um, one of the things that I've done today is to, sorry, one minute, please. One of the things I've done today is to deny the winners their most deserved one minute to just say a word, just a word, what, about, who, who, what this means to them. Just one minute per person. So I'll invite all the winners in each category to just each one minute to say what this means to you. I denied you that chance and it's yours. So I'll start with the, uh, the winner of the upcoming Human Rights Defender Award. And followed by the winners of the HLD of the Year Award, and then of course the Lifetime Achievement Awards. Please come over here. Guys, let's give them a hand of applause, please. So all of you will come over here. We get a photo, you get your photo like, collectively but at the same time giving a chance to individuals to make just one minute what that means to you. Uh, starting with, yeah? so starting with the lion. 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, my names are Ryan Muirule or Ruth Wangui. I'm a co-founder Intersex Persons Society of Kenya. Um, to me, I lack words, what I can say for winning this award. Uh, because when we were starting, we didn't even know one day we'll get here. Uh, because it, it was like a new thing. When you were introducing the topic of intersex, no one was even understanding. And um, the challenges were so little, because what we were trying to fight is like intersex infanticide is real, um, committing suicide, and the intersex don't get chance to go to school, so their school dropout, and also their health. So those are, were the things that we were trying to join our hands so that we can try to address and educate people. So today, as intersex, as I speak here, and speak on behalf of all intersex persons, we are very, very grateful. For the first time, we are recognized as human beings. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Benazir Mohammed. I'm the founder and the director of a community organization called Silver Line in Kenya that's based in Garissa County. I am very much humbled to um, be the upcoming Human Rights Award honoree because this is something that I have really prayed to get this uh, opportunity. Um, because it means a lot to me as a young person who is facing patriarchy every single day to try and advocate for issues, to try and advocate for policy implementation and domestication of policies. This will amplify my voice. I thank the Almighty for giving you know, this blessing to me and my team, the team that has been working with me in Silver Line in Kenya. I know Mwali Moja is here and I am I'm actually very thankful to him because he has held my hand throughout. Thank you to the coalition for recognizing me and I am still very humbled. Shukran. Shukran. Alal. Viva comrades, viva. Viva. Forward to social justice, forward. Forward to movement building forward. Forward, forward to liberation forward. forward. First, I'd like to thank uh, my family, my wife, Millie, my son, Austin, my daughter, Gracia, and Malcolm X, Nyerere. Because they are the ones who have given me the permission to do this work. Second, I'd like to thank all the comrades from the social justice movement and beyond. All the comrades from Bungela Mwananchi, all the comrades from Madare, who have always been together with us as we do this work. This partnership and these ideas started when me and Comrade Gasheke Gashi were in industrial area prison while we were arrested for doing a, a protest. And we started having a discussion of having human rights work being done at the community level. So it has been a journey. This journey started in prison. So Msidarau prison, it can come up with great ideas. And uh, me and Gasheke were in Bunge Lamanainchi and we said we've done a lot as Bunge. We need to go back to the grassroots. And the idea started at Madare Social Justice Center, Dandora Community Justice Center. Now we are here, we are, even winning awards. We don't take this for granted. Let's continue organizing. Let's continue organizing from the communities. And I'm sure the liberation will, is near. It's coming soon. Thank you very much. OK, thank you, Olal. Uh, Penina. Good evening, everybody. My name is Penina Mwangi, Director, Bar Hostess, Empowerment and Support Program, Big Word. I'm very, first I would like to thank one person who's here. I was very happy to see her, Anne Gadumbi. I really want to recognize her as the first person who gave, who helped us get our first human rights grant. 
when she was working at Open Society. So uh, it's a really, it's a big recognition that sex workers, women working in the bars, have joined the larger women movement, have joined the larger civil society movement, and uh, the changing of human recognition of human rights, so happy with the judges and with everybody here for recognizing that we are also part of the women movement with needs. So um, we began our work uh, in the HIV movement because that was the only place we had, uh, we had support, but over time we have been able to get support to work with governance because even sex workers need to elect good representatives, need to be part of the conversation of poverty reduction. And um, I'm very happy with the way the movement is moving. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Penina. And on behalf of uh, Onyango Olo, please, Ruth. <laughs> viva the spirit of Onyango Olo, viva. viva. Viva Onyango Olo, viva. viva. We did it. I'm here on behalf of my brother, my late brother Onyangolo. Uh, he was dead when I was uh, only eight years old, so I forgot everything about him. The only thing I could remember were the whispers from my dad, because that time, President Moore, you could not talk anything against him, so my dad was even scared that some of us would get uh, arrested. And uh, it breaks my heart because my mom is not here, and my dad, and Onyangolo, and the seven siblings that we lost. But uh, his spirit lives. We have Onyangolo Resource Center. I welcome all of you because we want to make a difference in Kenya. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would like to invite you a little bit ahead so that we can have a, gr we can have a group photo. Uh, please, can, can I invite the ambassadors and the judges so that can after this, we have one, they have one group photo before we take a break. Let's start with this group as others come in. Yeah. Now the ambassadors and the judging panel can join. Thank you very much. Um, today we decided to go digital. And I believe by now you have done the electronic voting. We want to know who will be the public choice award winner. If you have not voted, unfortunately time is up. Yes. So at this point, I would like on the screen you'll be in a few in a few seconds see 
who is the winner of the Public Choice Award? So, one, two, three. Who is the winner? Do the maths, do the maths, do the maths. <laughs> I am happy to announce that the human rights defender who is the most popular in here and for anyone out there who was able to participate in this and I'm told that there was no rigging. So the winner is Domtira Chesang. Come over here Domtira Chesang. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> what a wonderful choice. I think you guys have nailed it. You have nailed it. And uh, how does how does it feel? What does this mean to you? Tell us your name and what this means to you. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Please, please. Actually, I thought I'll be the last. <laughs> Because I only knew three people, even from the academy, apart from Tony, Redismo, and Angopi, I didn't know anybody else. But this means everything, everything to all the girls that I strive to defend in my community. You've all heard what has happened in my community. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't even know there would be a voting or anything. But as soon as I walked in here, I just texted people back home and I said, guys, you know, despite everything we've been through, let's do this. Let's make it happen. I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you very much. This, is, this, means, this means a lot. It means everything to me. I'm from West Pokot County. My name is Domchila Shasang, if you didn't know. I'm a teacher by profession. I, I advocate for the eradication of harmful practices in my community. My community subjects girls and women to female genital mutilation. They perform the type of FGM which is thought to be the most severe type of FGM. And as soon as a girl is cut, she's married off. That's it. That is it. So this is going to inspire so many girls in my community. It is going to make a big difference. The lives of the girls in my community will never be the same again. This is a difference. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before Domitia leaves the stage, I'd like to invite two members of the judging panel who are not here present to come over here and congratulate Domitia, please. The two of you. So, good evening. Um, my name is Andrew Miner. I'm a human rights defender and also a gay rights activist. I'd like to con congratulate Domitila for winning this award. Uh, congratulations. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Godfrey Mwampembo Gado. I'm a co founder of uh, Buni Media, it's a multimedia company that produces content in uh, Nairobi uh, and um, at night I'm uh, uh, an editorial cartoonist with the, the standard newspapers. Um, Domitila, thank you very much. Uh, it is stories like yours that um, um, inspires us all. Uh, and I would like to say that the, myself um, and my colleagues in the media, uh, I know we would not like to admit but uh, we do feed on such stories. 
So thank you very much, and, and uh, 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 don't stop inspiring us. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think this is... I think you have complimented the work of the judges, and you can tell even the public is very happy with the kind of choices that we have. Um, at this point, I just want to say that I'd like just to say that on behalf of Defenders Coalition, which is the National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders in Kenya, on behalf of the Working Group on Human Rights Defenders, members of the Working Group, all of whom I can see here, uh, on behalf of the Human Rights Defenders here, on behalf of the organizations here, I think this is something that is special, special for all of us as human rights defenders community because of the work that we do. And I feel that the way we are going, we're gonna create a bigger movement of human rights defenders, intersectionality of rights, and that, we, that, that marathon that no one should be left behind is actually being realized right here. So um, I feel that at this point, my job is done here. My name is Kamau Ngoge, uh, DKE, or the Director of the National Coalition of Human Rights Defenders, which is a Defenders Coalition. At this point, I'd like to invite Ambassador uh, to come and tell us something, and then after that, win the reins, then we know what is next steps. So thank you very much. Welcome, Ambassador. Yeah. Everybody. First and foremost, uh, my name is Ellen Bagitirongle. I'm the Norwegian ambassador. And uh, I just first and foremost would like to congratulate all of you that have been uh, nominated and awarded. I think they need really an, another good applause. <laughs> and Norway, uh, we are a strong supporter of human rights. And this is the backbone of what we do in Kenya and uh, the human rights defenders. Uh, so I just wanted to say that the reason why I'm here is actually that we are going to take over the co-chair role for the um, human rights defenders working group from March next year. And that means that this award ceremony is going to be in our place next fall, and I'm very happy to invite you to our place. And I also want to say that these issues are very, very to our heart. Um, it's so uh, breathtaking, actually, to listen to all of you and the stories you bring forward. For us, of course, it's so important that you can do your work freely and with no threats to you and your own family. And I also just want to say that we're also working on this on a more multilateral and UN level, just to ensure that the whole world is into this issue and support the work of the human rights defenders. Thank you very much for this evening and thank you for everything you do. Thank you. And now, just to conclude, I'm going to uh, hand over the chair from the, Women Rights Defend uh, from the Human Rights Defenders Group from Belgium to Norway. So they have to shake hands. And I want to thank again our Belgian colleague for his commitment. I just would like to say a word because she's here tonight. Uh, that we, I mean, we're happy to hand over this responsibility that we've been holding for two years and I would like to thank very much Noe Miral, my first secretary, for all the work she's been doing with the Human Rights Defenders for the past two years.
So that was a very critical announcement uh, that um, in the last two years the, we've been hosted as a working group by the, uh, by the ambassador of Belgium. Uh, we were very much appreciate and that the ambassador for Norway has gladly accepted to take us to the next level. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that partnership and that uh, the missions uh, who are members of the working groups, civil society organizations feel much honored by that appreciation. This is important for all of us because human rights defending is something universal. It's not unique to Kenya, it's something global and this solidarity is very critical for the work that we do. So thank you very much. So at this point, now I invite uh, the ambassador of France to therefore give the final uh, concluding remarks. No speech. I would just like to congratulate all the uh, winners and we are all winners and I was very much impressed and uh, moved by uh, your testimonies, your commitment and I think it was for me a very a very big event for my embassy, for my staff, for Anne-Sophie who worked hard on this uh, ceremony and uh, for all of you. Now the uh, ceremony is not over, now just uh, enjoy uh, the cocktail, the music, the dance and everything. So Kwaheri and let's have the Mashuja band, uh, the, the field marshals will continue encouraging us. The field marshals. Human rights defenders, viva! Viva! Viva Kenya, viva! Viva! Viva Africa, viva! Viva! Ole yo! Ho! Like uh, we are together. Nataka, Nataka, Moyo Wangu. 